Hello, I'm Don Cunningham, President and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for tuning in to this 60-minute program, produced as an alternative to our 2021 annual meeting. Unable to meet in person, we took the opportunity to re-envision our annual meeting and develop a program featuring some of our key leaders and companies to better understand today's Lehigh Valley economy. We will remember last year for a long time to come. It has fundamentally changed our lives, our relationships, our perspective on work, society, family, and all that we hold dear. It's unlikely that we will ever again take for granted a grocery store worker, a delivery person, a nurse, a doctor, a teacher, or each other. Heroes emerged among those who never seek the headlines. We learned life is fragile and fleeting as we mourn the dead, prayed for the sick, and thank those that risk themselves for us. On behalf of the board and staff of LVEDC, we thank all of you on our front lines. You kept the Lehigh Valley safe and operating. A special thank you to all of our healthcare workers and our two great health networks, Lehigh Valley and St. Luke's, our region's two largest employers and pillars of our quality of life. Just as there is little we can do as people without our health, the success of a community begins with the quality of its health care. It's fitting that LVDC's incoming board chair is Ed Dougherty, Senior Vice President and Chief Business Development Officer at Lehigh Valley Health Network. You'll hear from Ed at the end of today's program as he begins his term as our chair. The coronavirus pandemic brought changes, both good and bad, to the Lehigh Valley economy. And just as the economy changed, so did we. Like others, LVDC struggled with lost revenue as hotel occupancy plummeted. We were kept on track by generous private investors and emergency public funds directed our way by state and county leaders. I thank all of them along with our board of directors, our dedicated staff, and all the investors, public and private, that make this program and all of our work possible. Thank you. LVEDC thanks the sponsors of this 2021 virtual annual meeting. Without the generous support of our sponsors, programs like this would not be possible. We sincerely appreciate all that they do to help us bring you important programs on the Lehigh Valley economy. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Our premier sponsor, Fitzpatrick, Lentz, and Booba. Thank you to our gold sponsor, Fulton Bank. Our silver sponsors, Boyle Construction, Crayola, and Lehigh Valley Health Network. And our bronze sponsors, EarthRes Group, Good Shepherd Rehabilitation Network, Clunk and Milan Advertising, NAI Summit, and Orashore Technologies. LVEDC would also like to thank our production venue, ArtsQuest, and our video production team, Countess Communications. Thank you to all LVEDC event sponsors, to our investors for their continuing commitment to economic growth and opportunity in the Lehigh Valley, and to all those viewing our annual meeting program. The power of genetics is undeniable, but when it comes to our health and well-being, zip code is more important than genetic code. The very place we call home impacts the choices we make and the care we receive. From solving food insecurity to providing access to health screenings, Capital Blue Cross is investing in the health of our communities. Rooted in central Pennsylvania and the Lehigh Valley, backed by national strength, Capital Blue Cross. It's with great honor, but with great regret, that I recognize Jane Long as LVDC's outgoing board chair. Jane has served LVDC's board for more than a decade, providing wise and steady counsel. She's been our chair for four years, two consecutive terms, only the second person to do that. To me, Jane is LVDC. She was here when I was hired, and I've learned volumes listening to her, talking with her, and observing her ever-present eye for detail and a knack for knowing just when to make a point or ask a question. Jane's a true professional, a gifted leader, a special person, and the rare combination of brains and heart and character that makes for someone extraordinary. I will miss her enthusiasm for all things Lehigh Valley. 
her toughness, her commitment to fairness and honesty at all times, and her quiet leadership. She's been a mentor and a friend. She's truly earned this special rocking chair in recognition of her contribution. LVEDC and Lehigh Valley have been gifted with her service, her talent, and her love and commitment for her adopted hometown. Thank you, Jane, for all that you've done for all of us. Four years ago, when I became chair of the LVEDC board, I could never in my wildest imagination dream that I would be giving my outgoing remarks to you via Zoom during a global pandemic. I don't think four years ago I even knew what Zoom was. I keep thinking about the song from Hamilton, The World Turned Upside Down. I miss coming out of our board meeting that we always have before the annual meeting and coming out into the din of 500 or so of the Lehigh Valley's business leaders, movers and shakers, and importantly, LVEDC's investors and supporters. I miss standing on the stage and looking out at the sea of all of the faces of all of you who believe in LVEDC's mission and are committed to it. And I miss saying every year, like I do, I'm so sorry to be standing between you and the cocktail hour at the end of the meeting. But here we are. So I wanna say thank you to everyone for joining us remotely as we look back on the year 2020, a year that I'm quite sure most of us would prefer to forget. As I conclude my four years as LVEDC's board chair, I'm pleased to leave this position in the very capable hands of my successor, Ed Doherty. You'll be hearing from Ed a little later in the program. Ed will have a strong group of officers to assist him. Starting new two-year terms today are as Vice Chair, Neil Coplin, as Treasurer, Patricia Johnson, who will be returning for her second term, and returning as Secretary, Dan McCarthy. I'd like to thank Don Cunningham and the LVEDC staff, as well as the entire LVEDC board for their dedication, commitment, engagement, and tireless work and support throughout my tenure. And I would be remiss if I did not say thank you to my firm, Fitzpatrick, Lentz and Buba, for their commitment to LVEDC and for their unflagging support of me during my two terms. It has truly been a privilege to work with all of you. And now as we continue, I'm pleased to turn the program back to LVEDC's president and CEO, Don Cunningham, for his annual update on the Lehigh Valley economy. Thank you. Socrates taught that true wisdom comes from knowing what you don't know and acknowledging it. It's good he's not around today in our age of certainty. In the online and media world of pundits, prognosticators, and bloviators, there's no currency in uncertainty. In the world of Twitter, being certain matters more than being correct. We don't know yet doesn't make the best tweet. The reality is that the pandemic that engulfed our lives last March created economic change we don't yet fully understand. As saving lives and reducing the spread of a deadly virus took precedent, it altered the way we work, who worked, how, and when. The whirlwind of economic headwinds and tailwinds has lifted some, deflated others, and held many in place. The dust has yet to settle. If there's any certainty, it's that economic life will forever be changed. As with world wars and industrial and technological revolutions, a pandemic that kills more than half a million Americans and two and a half million people in the world bends the arc of economic history. International supply chains will be rethought, remote work and office space reimagined, the value of public investment in medical research and development realized. Will this mean more corporate offices and professional jobs 
in less crowded cities that don't rely on public transportation? Or will more professional workers live in smaller markets and work from home while the office remains in the large city? Will more pharmaceuticals be made and developed here in the U.S.? Will supply chain lines shorten and reliance on global networks be reduced? Whatever the answers, it will be a new normal. The arc has been bent. We don't go back to February 2020. Last year in the Lehigh Valley was a tale of two economies. Much of the service economy of restaurants, hotels, art centers, and hospitality venues closed or operated at reduced capacity, while online retailers, manufacturers, food and beverage producers, grocery stores, healthcare, and other parts of the national supply chain based here boomed, some with sales growth of 25 to 30%. Unemployment grew in restaurants and hospitality, while industrial employers struggled to find workers, even with jobs advertised at $20 plus per hour for low-skilled new hires. The growth of the Lehigh Valley continued during the pandemic, while our downtowns, hotels, and arts and sports venues were hobbled. There were 41 major expansion or new development projects in 2020, resulting in the creation or retention of more than 6,000 jobs. Once again, for the fifth consecutive year, Site Selection Magazine, a leading real estate industry publication, lists the Lehigh Valley as one of the top 10 growing metropolitan areas in the United States of regions with populations between 200,000 and 1 million people. In the Northeast United States, Lehigh Valley was again in the top five markets for economic development projects completed. The rankings are part of Site Selection's prestigious annual Governor's Cup Awards that comes out each March, listing economic growth by state and metropolitan area. The Lehigh Valley being the top tier has become a regular thing. Pandemic or not, the growth continued. And economic development activity, particularly in the industrial and manufacturing arena, has not stopped. We remain a leading, attractive market, competitive on a national level against much larger metropolitan areas. In 2020, developers delivered 3.3 million square feet of industrial space in Lehigh Valley. There's another 9 million currently under construction, 6% of our region's total inventory, making Lehigh Valley among the busiest industrial markets for construction in the nation, only ranking behind Nashville and Austin. Some of the last year's projects include Orshore Technologies expanding its medical diagnostics manufacturing operation in Bethlehem, U.S. Specialty Formulations developing a new pharmaceutical production facility in Allentown, and Sharp Packaging adding a new pharma packaging facility in Lower Mukunji. Once again, several manufacturers either expanded or planted new routes in the Lehigh Valley. Last year, AP Duval relocated to Northampton County from New Jersey to produce deodorant and other personal care products, while Silgan Containers came to Lehigh County to make metal cans. Floratech has added to the region's growing medical device manufacturing with a range of medical products. Bowery Farming is developing a vertical farming operation to produce various foods on the former Bethlehem steel land in Bethlehem. Suncup Juice is opening a juice production facility while Flexicon and Follett are both expanding their large manufacturing operations in Northampton County. The Lehigh Valley's GDP was a record $43.3 billion in 2019. That's more GDP than the states of Vermont, Wyoming, and Alaska. Lehigh Valley is now the 65th largest economy in the U.S. and its 52nd largest manufacturing center. We have about 700 companies producing a wide range of products with about 34,000 workers. Manufacturing is our second largest sector behind only finance, insurance, and real estate, and it makes up 16.5% of the Lehigh Valley's economic output. By comparison, in the United States, manufacturing is about 12% of the economy. As new opportunities emerge, we remain concerned about our restaurants, our downtowns, and our quality of life assets. It's imperative that we work for their return. The solid and diverse base of the Lehigh Valley economy, built over the past decades, is getting us through. 
It's limited the effect of the quarantine as cornerstones of the economy here. Healthcare, manufacturing and production, and supply chain grow in value and importance. The economic renaissance of the Lehigh Valley continues. The first draft of a post-pandemic history with new challenges and opportunities is just being written. During an 18-month span in 2019 and 2020, more than a dozen new executives were named to run major companies and institutions here. The largest corporate leadership change the region has seen in decades. These executives are infusing the region with new perspectives, direction, and energy as they lead companies both old and new and personally discover the talent, the charms, and the assets of Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Listen to what a few of them have to say. We're really committed to uh, the Lehigh Valley, and, and I know the Lehigh Valley is committed to us. 75% of what we manufacture, sell, market around the globe uh, is, is made in the Lehigh Valley. When I look specifically here uh, at the plant we have here, um, it is impressive the talent we have. Um, uh, the capabilities we have, all the capabilities we have built over, over the years. Now we have an apprenticeship program to continue to do that. And uh, when you look at all those capabilities and uh, the dedication of the people, you know, there's a, it's a great future. This is a big reason why we decided uh, to stay here. I see much, much more internship here than I have in any of the other areas I've lived. You know, we talk about the, the Lehigh Valley benefiting from PPL, but PPL benefits tremendously from the Lehigh Valley. Um, just a great workforce. And the administration has made it very clear they want to see more manufacturing of pharmaceuticals and medical devices and even PPE in the United States. And I think that bodes well not only for our industry and for Sharp, but I think potentially for the Lehigh Valley as well. We've always been in Allentown and we continue to have a, a building in Allentown. Now I have to tell you, we have been utterly um, amazed as to um, how rich and deep and how much there is to Lehigh Valley. Uh, I mean, in the short time we've been here, whether it's farmers markets, whether it's down here at Steel Stacks, whether it's to the museum, um, whether it's to great restaurants, we have just, you know, been uh, amazingly impressed on, on, on the richness of Lehigh Valley. Of all our moves, I think this has been the easiest one. The true hallmark of any location is the people, those who choose to call it home. Lehigh Valley is the land of makers and dreamers. Hard work is our heritage, and it's that heritage that fuels us. Our traditions unite us. Our legacy is determination. Our future will be built on the principles of creativity and perseverance. Because when others said we couldn't, we did. Some may think of us as underdogs, yeah? We'll never underestimate the underdog. Lehigh Valley has been and always will be home to those with great vision. We know the value of an honest day's work. We practically wrote the book on it. Out of the embers from the hands that forged a nation come those that are crafting the future. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got work to do. Life sciences and medical manufacturing is one of the Lehigh Valley's most exciting sectors and a growing industry of focus since the pandemic. Here on the eastern border of Pennsylvania, right between New York and Philadelphia, the region sits among a supercluster of life science companies within a 400 mile stretch from Boston to Washington, DC. It's also in the middle of the pharmaceutical belt of northern New Jersey and suburban Philadelphia. A microcluster of about 180 life science companies are in the Lehigh Valley today. They're attracted to the region's colleges, large health networks, 
quality of life, talent, and manufacturing and distribution capabilities. Orshore, Olympus, and B. Braun are the largest and best known. 2020 marked the highest employment in the sector over the last two decades, with about 6,300 workers and an average wage of about $94,000 per year. Employment in surgical and medical interest instrument manufacturing in the Lehigh Valley is nearly five times higher than the typical U.S. region. To explore the region's growing life sciences market, I recently sat down with some impressive leaders and companies based in Lehigh Valley. I am very, uh, very honored and we're very fortunate to be joined uh, by three uh, leading members of the companies in life sciences and biotech here in the Lehigh Valley. They are Sam Nibala, who is the founder and CEO of Cryo Concepts in Bethlehem, uh, Kyle Flanagan, the CEO of U.S. Specialty Formulations in South Allentown, and Sal Salamone, President and CEO of Saladex uh, Biomedical. Uh, and just to, the, to give you a, a little background out there for of the prominence of, of these gentlemen and their companies, uh, Sam uh, uh, Nibala is one of the co-founders of Orshore Technologies here in the Lehigh Valley. He holds more than 50 U.S. and international patents. He has a master's and Ph.D. in uh, chemistry uh, from Lehigh U University, and he's been here in the Lehigh Valley a long time as one of the co-founders of what became uh, Orshore uh, Technologies. And uh, Sam, uh, I want to uh, ask you to take a moment and just talk about Cryo Concepts, the last decade of, of your work here in life sciences in the Lehigh Valley. Thanks, Don. Um, and really happy to be part of the panel. Uh, obviously, the Lehigh Valley is home. Came here a long time ago when we started Orisher. And one of the products that we first uh, commercialized back in those days was cryosurgery. So this was for um, the treatment of things when you go to your doctor's offices, like warts or bumps and lumps. And uh, it actually became a, a, a very solid business um, uh, overall because we gave an alternative to what you'd classically have to go to a dermatologist to treat. And then later after I left Orsher, still had ideas. And of course, being the inventive type came up with some new products and started uh, uh, Cryo Concepts a little over 10 years ago. And so we, we've grown over this time. And so what we make that everybody would know is whether you take your pet to the veterinarian or you go to a drugstore like CVS or Rite Aid, if you look on the shelf and you see the little products that treat warts or bumps and lumps or things that they wanna take off, we make all of that stuff using um, basically cold gases. So mm -hmm. these are delivered and they, they freeze whatever it is and then it falls off. It's a very natural process. And so um, we've grown in kind of leaps and bounds over the last couple of years and continue to have a footprint now in North America and Europe and Latin America. And so it's, it's another great one as a serial entrepreneur to see growing in the Lehigh Valley. Well, we're fortunate to have you here. We're fortunate to have all of you here. And I want to shift over to, uh, to Kyle Flanagan. Kyle is the CEO of U.S. Specialty Formulations. Uh, before he started his own entrepreneurial uh, endeavor with a partner, he worked for 18 years in advanced uh, nanotechnology manufacturing. Uh, Kyle spent nine years in critical materials development at Intel uh, and found his way here to the Lehigh Valley through uh, Avanter uh, Performance Materials. Uh, he founded, uh, helped to found U.S. Specialty Formulations back in 2013. Uh, Kyle, great to have you here and great to have you in the Lehigh Valley. You want to take a moment and, and talk about what uh, U.S. Specialty Formulations focus is. Yeah, thanks for having me and an opportunity to talk about what we do and why we're here. So U.S. Specialty Formulations kind of came about because uh, as Gary and I were, were sitting talking, we, we realized there weren't many opportunities for uh, a company involved in development to man have their materials made or manufactured in, in such a way that they could continue with um, critical clinical developments. So after you know, thinking and looking at a couple of models um, and really going into depth in these models, we decided to start up a company that focuses on specialty manufacturing, specifically sterile manufacturing. So we created U.S. Specialty Formulations 
as a contract manufacturer that manufactures sterile pharmaceuticals. We started off with, with our own with uh, contracts for a couple of different um, third parties to manufacture their materials. Then we created our own uh, USSF branded materials. And now we've really expanded beyond that and we've moved into you know, vaccine development, vaccine commercialization, the, what's called the uh, fermentation fill process. We do filling for other companies. We also do some botanical distillation. So a, a huge wide range of, of, of uh, operations are conducted with our, with our company. And that's what we like. We're, we're really a contract manufacturer that can do anything that the customer would want us to do. And we recently expanded into the 41,000 square foot facility in Allentown. And this is, this is allowing us to bring in and onboard a whole lot more people and grow this area and also grow the capabilities of the area. Um, we're, you know, really only one of 80 in the country that, uh, that do this stuff. Well, and your, your company's development is very exciting for the region because it really starts to enter us into pharmaceutical manufacturing and production. And I want to talk a little bit, uh, a little bit more about that uh, in the, on the panel. I also want to bring into the discussion uh, Sal Salamone. Uh, Sal is the president and CEO of Saladex Biomedical, which is one of the anchor tenants at uh, Ben Franklin Tech Ventures at Lehigh University in South Bethlehem. Uh, Sal was a former VP of uh, R&D at Roche Diagnostics for 17 years, where he launched seven major product lines and more than 70 FDA-approved products and 200 instrument applications. Uh, he was inducted into the New Jersey uh, Inventors Hall of Fame in 2016 uh, and came here to the Lehigh Valley back in 01 as a senior VP uh, at Orishore. We're certainly uh, grateful to have Sal and Saladex here uh, in Bethlehem in the Lehigh Valley. Sal, you want to tell us a little bit about Saladex Biomedical? Uh, and, and Don, thanks, thanks for the invitation. Uh, um, you know, Ben Franklin and, and Lehigh Valley has been very, very good to uh, Saladex. Um, and I, I've been now in the Lehigh Valley for about 20 years. Um, actually, I, I first started uh, working in the Lehigh Valley at, at Orishore Technologies. Sam and I have known each other probably about 35 years, Sam. Yeah. Long time. But um, anyhow, um, Saladax is a, uh, a diagnostic company. And um, we um, really are on the cutting edge of uh, personalized medicine. And what we do is we uh, develop tests to measure drug levels in the patient or exposure levels in the patient. And by the doctor knowing the exposure level of the drug, they can adjust doses to each individual so that uh, the efficacy of the drug can increase mm -hmm. and the toxicity can decrease. And um, we're mainly focused in the field of oncology and in, in psychiatry. And uh, these are areas that have an unmet need in terms of personalizing medicine. So we've been able to establish a very strong intellectual property portfolio and launch a number of tests worldwide. And we're in uh, China, in the US, and uh, in, in Europe. And uh, so we have extensive uh, um, supply chains throughout the world. Yeah, and all three of your companies are so impressive in the depth and the reach and, and the engagement in such critical fields. I think a lot of folks don't realize that the Lehigh Valley, which is the third largest region here in Pennsylvania, both in population and economy, uh, has such a growing and developing life sciences, biomed tech uh, sector. But you know, each of you talk about being here for, for decades. Uh, and I, I think I'll turn to, to Sam first. I mean, you, I've, I've, you've been here probably uh, the longest. Uh, what have you found to be uh, so helpful in the Lehigh Valley to support your various endeavors in life sciences? Um, well, it's, it's really the support. I mean, I, again, I didn't grow up in this area. My wife did. That was in part what first, you know, got me to know the area. And then Ben Franklin is a big part of the roots. Um, you know, over time, there's none of us that can deny, uh, uh, you know, all of the influence they've had just making facilities available. I think another big part is the tie in to the university system. Um, 
you know, whether it was Orishore or now Cryo Concepts, we've always had, um, uh, you know, students, interns, people who wanted to live and be here. And then when you could couple their desire to be here, because it's a great place to live, um, with the school systems and then the ability to really grow in their careers because across all three of us, there's a variety of technologies. Uh, and you think about the other companies, we, we really have become this kind of medical device area with a lot of um, now uh, people who are young when Sal and I were young, growing up, becoming experts and now teaching on to other generations. It's a little scary. Uh, I don't know Sal's experience at this point and Kyle looks a lot younger. But um, now we're starting to see the children of our first employees coming on board as employees. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of those where you go, I don't know where time went, but it's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've, I've, I've uh, known you through several different iterations and jobs in my career. Yeah. So. I know yeah. the feeling, but, and I think Kyle is the youngest among us. And uh, Kyle, you also had some touch points with Ben Franklin. Um, and uh, that has been a helpful process for you here in the Lehigh Valley? Yeah, I think it has. I mean, Gary and I looked for a, a while, you know, back in 2013, we started uh, looking for a, 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 a alpha, what we call the alpha site. And, um, you know, when we started looking at what was required, really Ben Franklin was the was the, the best starting point so that we could try out our ideas, run them past the FDA, see what their, their questions and, and comments were prior to actually, you know, drop spending the big money and uh, getting a, doing a full build out on a, on a larger facility. So it definitely, you know, helped there. I, I would say the other thing about this area, which I think is Im important, is the Lehigh Valley is at a confluence of, you know, several major highways, right? We've got the, the warehousing here, which is big. But that confluence with the with the highways, transportation zones, and the airports, you know, fit in with some of USF's future plans quite, quite nicely. And we scoured the country looking for um, a variety of places to, to, to locate the beta, what we call the beta facility, this facility we're in now. And uh, really, we were, we narrowed it down to two, and, and Lehigh Valley was was one of them. Sal, uh, you are still anchored at Ben Franklin at the Tech Ventures facility, and for the folks who may not be familiar, Ben Franklin uh, is a uh, really a program of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that has four facilities across the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, that's supported by state funding that allows the incubation of technology companies to grow, uh, usually on the campus of a university. In the case of the Lehigh Valley, it's based on the campus of uh, Lehigh University. Uh, but your, your company is um, uh, Saladex Biomedical, which is anchored there today. Yeah, right? no, um, what, what I was first exposed, uh, you know, to the Lehigh Valley and, and, um, and Ben Franklin when I, when I was at Orishore Technologies. And, and I saw how um, well the community treated Orishore and, and the uh, initial uh, support that they got from the community and from Ben Franklin. And so in uh, setting up Saladax, I, I, I saw that you know, the Lehigh Valley was really a, a good place to uh, start up a business. And I'm from New Jersey, and actually I did look into New Jersey and, and incubators there, and it, it was a fairly unfriendly environment for startup companies in New Jersey. And um, I found that Ben Franklin and the state of Pennsylvania, you know, just was welcoming. And, and um, it just, it made it easy to set up a company. It, 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 it's ever easy to set up a company. But, uh, you know, and, and that, that was, you know, the first, first part of it. But, this, you know, I could talk hours about this, but I mean, another very good aspect of it is that there's a tremendous talent pool in this area. I mean, we have so many colleges and universities. You know, we have no problems getting highly qualified uh, individuals. Um, you know, the, the, the small uh, colleges in this area produce excellent candidates. And then, and then we reach out, um, you know, as far as Penn State, University of Pennsylvania, uh, Rutgers, and they're all, you know, within driving distance. And we're able to attract really uh, good good individuals, and, and uh, not only that, the Lehigh Valley, and I think Sam alluded to this, is affordable. 
And so you, you can hire somebody, um, and within a year or two, they can purchase a house in this area. You know, if, if, they, if you hire somebody into central New Jersey, you know, they have to work half their life to uh, get a house. Well, and you know what, what folks may not realize is the location of the Lehigh Valley, which sits on the eastern border of Pennsylvania, um, really almost right between Philadelphia and New York City, about 80 miles out of uh, Manhattan, about 60 miles out of the port of uh, Newark, and about 60 miles above Philadelphia. Uh, and as Kyle mentioned, um, uh, with about a seven hour drive, we we touch uh, 40 percent of the consumers in the United States because of the density of population in the in the northeast. Uh, and obviously, hundreds of universities with 11 uh, here in the Lehigh Valley. This issue of talent, uh, which has become so critical in economic development, um, how, you, you know, in your, in your fields and what have you found in terms of um, uh, talent being available to you uh, and accessible here in the, in the region? No, I was just going to jump in and say I, I couldn't agree more, I mean, with what Sal said about the university system. Um, you know, there, there's people who are just passing through and they want to do internships on their way to wherever it is they're going. And there's others who, who really say, you know, I really like it here. Uh, I, and, you know, kind of the younger your company, the more likely you are to invest in those people. One, because you can afford it. Two, they're, they're willing and they've got the hands and the intellect to do it. And then as time goes on, you find that, you, you know, you begin to get a little more selective. But as this builds, and, and I would say like our company now has gone through this in the early days there were a lot of students plus I had spent 10 years as a professor of practice at Lehigh after I left Orisher and you you find that this was really just a great feeder for the company because it builds in the culture the expertise and um, and if they go somewhere else then you know god bless them they've learned something and they get to take it elsewhere but they, they always have a good feeling about what they found here in the valley and, and Kyle, as the as the, the newer company to the to market here in the Lehigh Valley, uh, what has been your experience? So I think early on, the um, because of the nature of the business that we that we have, the the training and the requirements can be uh, mm -hmm. kind of limiting on on who we can bring in initially, just because of of the amount of uh, uh, investment we have to make to get the person up to speed. Um, you know, we're in the middle of starting our ramp to bring over 100 people on board in the next two to three years. So I, I definitely will have comments on that in a, in a couple of a years. <laughs> well, so. We'll be happy to, to work with awesome. you to, to help align that process. You know, with only a, a few minutes left for, for this session, um, obviously the last year has been upending for the American economy, the American people, international economy. Uh, but interestingly, I think it's put a lot of focus on life sciences and, and biomedicine. What I'm curious to, to hear from each of you what you see as what's evolved and maybe what the future will hold for uh, growth of, of your industry. And I'll, I'll go back to, uh, to Kyle to mix up the order. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, just use, to use short words, um, opportunity, um, opportunity, um, significant advancements. And I think the world now realizes that a little more risk taking is possible without endangering safety or quality. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, I think the renewed investment in biotech, the realization of importance in investing in infrastructure, um, you know, this is biotech is, well, we'll say pharmaceuticals specifically is one where if you don't have the facilities in place, uh, Two to three years ahead of time, they're not going to be ready when you need them. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've demonstrated yeah, we that. Learned, we, we definitely. And Sal, um, what are your thoughts with um, your work in in pharmaceuticals? Health healthcare in general is 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 a very high demand area, and I really don't see um, the the, the uh, anything. Um, I I really don't see any 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 hold up in that. Um, you know, we, we progress. There's, there's a lot of problems that have to be solved. And um, through diagnostics and through pharmaceuticals, we can um, address many of these healthcare problems. And I, I just see it as an ever increasing uh, area of uh, growth. And, yeah. um, and, you know, attracting people to this field is quite easy because it's, it's a very relevant field. And, and um, 
we do have a, a very good talent pool to uh, draw And from. Sam, I want to give you the, the last word here for the future of life sciences in the U.S. and in the Lehigh Valley. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely healthy. Again, the, the pandemic puts a, uh, a slowness into us because we're all a little unsure. But the one thing is for sure, we'll still get sick. We'll still need care. And we have excellent technology. So I, you know, I'll use our own example from last year where we sell products to both direct to consumers and physicians. The physicians were down because we weren't going to our doctors, but a lot of us bought stuff on Amazon and through drugstores and other places. So that was up. And um, so there may be some change in dynamics, but the need will absolutely be there. Well, and we wanna thank all three of you for having your companies here. Uh, we'll keep working with you uh, to grow and, and thank you for taking a few moments out to talk to us about the life sciences sector here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Thank, thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I will let LVEDC's three talented vice presidents, Jamie Whalen, George Lewis, and Carrie Ann Galinas, who I'm fortunate to work with every day, detail some of the partnerships, initiatives, and work that has resulted in LVEDC being named for the second straight year, one of the top 20 economic development organizations in America. Certainly our world changed last March. It required new direction and initiative to serve existing business, to market and recruit, and to ensure we kept LVEDC afloat as we struggled with the same financial challenges as many Lehigh Valley companies. As a nonprofit coalition, we weren't sure a year ago what impact the pandemic would have upon us. Fortunately, LVEDC is a public-private partnership with a diverse funding structure. And fortunately, so many in the Lehigh Valley understand the importance of investing in regional economic growth and strategies. Despite the pandemic, we miraculously retained our private investment levels. We are forever grateful. Elected leaders at all levels of government responded to the pandemic with emergency financial support to bridge the gap, especially our leaders in Lehigh and Northampton counties. Northampton County Executive Lamont McClure and Lehigh County Executive Phillips Armstrong and the members of both legislative branches embraced a plan to help Lehigh Valley regional organizations like LVEDC with the allocation of emergency federal CARES Act funds in recognition of the work we do and the partnerships we have built. This crucial help in our hour of greatest need allowed LVEDC to continue the critical economic development work that helps keep the Lehigh Valley economy strong. We thank our county partners, the long-standing bedrock of LVEDC's Regional Partnership for Economic Development. Good morning. I'm proud to continue Lehigh County's long tradition of supporting the LVEDC to advance economic development and create jobs for the Lehigh Valley. When a coalition of public and private sector partners come together to form LVEDC 25 years ago, their vision was a truly regional approach that would enable the Lehigh Valley to compete in a changing economy. That forward-thinking vision has proven to be exactly the right approach. It's why Lehigh County has maintained a strong partnership with the LBEDC and why we felt it was so important to designate some of our CARES Act funds we received to help support the LBEDC's mission. You're exactly right, Phil. LBEDC is a valuable partner to Northampton County. In the face of the unprecedented challenges created by the COVID-19 crisis, Northampton County recognized the need to use CARES Act funds to help regional partners like LVEDC. It's been a challenging and interesting year. Much of our work has been focused on helping small businesses, restaurants, and the hospitality industry affected by the quarantine to find resources and survive. At the same time, many of our manufacturers and supply chain companies have experienced record sales growth and are adding employees. We rely on our regional partners to get this done. 
CARES Act funds help to continue the work of Discover Lehigh Valley, ArtsQuest, and LVEDC. We are very pleased to support the economic development work of the LVEDC for the greater good of Northampton County and the Lehigh Valley. Throughout these past 12 months, LVEDC continued to think outside the box and pursue strategic initiatives that go beyond typical economic development activity. Emergency loans to small businesses became a priority and our talented public finance staff of former bankers was a tremendous asset. And we couldn't do it without the LVDC board, our investors, stakeholders, and public partners. It truly is a coalition that makes it happen. All are equally important, but there are a few I need to point out for their extraordinary contribution. So many of our long-standing contributors, more than 125, found a way, despite the economic downturn, to continue or increase their support. More than 45 of the 125 partners contributed at our organization's highest levels of investment. What has been humbling were the 15 investors from our smallest to our largest who not only renewed, but who increased their support to increase the viability of our initiatives. We are also grateful for the continued support from Workforce Board Lehigh Valley. Finally, I would like to welcome and recognize the five new investors of LVDC in 2020. A crisis reminds you how important it is to have friends and supporters. Don regularly calls LVEDC a coalition of the willing. We are fortunate that so many are so willing to invest in and support in a strong economy for the people of the Lehigh Valley. Thank you for your partnerships. The economic development model used to be attract employers and talent will follow. That old model has been turned on its head. Today, the ability to attract companies and jobs is driven by access to talent. The Lehigh Valley understands this new approach to economic development, as well as any region in the country. In 2015, LVEDC launched a talent initiative. It brought together our schools, employers, and community leaders intent on ensuring that the Lehigh Valley has a world-class workforce. The Education and Talent Supply Council is a cross-sector coalition. It identifies issues and creates data-driven solutions for our most critical talent needs. The Council can boast of many impressive achievements. The annual Internship Summit, which we hosted virtually in 2020, brings together colleges and employers to establish and expand programs that connect businesses with their future talent. From the summit, we created an internship toolkit as a guide for businesses to build internship programs and an internship directory, which lists contacts and programs at Lehigh Valley Colleges and Universities. A working group of our council distributed a high school curriculum on employability skills that was developed by one of our leading partners, the Workforce Board Lehigh Valley. Another working group researched and developed the Hot Careers Guide, which we've updated for 2021. The guide lists the Lehigh Valley's most in-demand occupations by sector, educational requirements, and expected earnings. It's been shared with more than 50,000 students across the region. It's just one example of the substantial research component of our talent initiative. We collaborate with colleges, universities, and technical schools to collect data in real time on numbers of graduates, types of degrees awarded, and students in the talent pipeline. We are conducting, in partnership with alumni offices, a survey of our graduates from our region's colleges and universities to measure their perceptions of the Lehigh Valley. Earlier talent perception research led directly to the creation of the Made Possible in Lehigh Valley campaign to make people aware of all that our region has to offer. To tell you more about the progress of the Made Possible campaign, here's LVEDC Vice President of Marketing, Communications and Research, George Lewis. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Of the many tools we use to market the Lehigh Valley, Perhaps the most powerful is our stories. That's the idea behind the new regional marketing campaign Made Possible in Lehigh Valley. Launched just two years ago, Made Possible has become the latest great example of partnerships driving progress on shared regional goals. In this case, the goal is to market the Lehigh Valley with one voice and one message 
whether we're working to attract people, companies, or visitors. Made Possible is a platform for telling the stories of our people, places, companies, and quality of life. The stories are a welcome mat for potential newcomers, creating the feeling that I can see myself fitting there. We've shared experiences of now familiar faces like my friend Carol, who knew nothing about the Lehigh Valley when she and her husband moved here 18 years ago. We thought that in a few years, if we didn't like it, we could find another place, Carol said. The Lehigh Valley has grown on me. I love this place and wouldn't think of moving again. There are so many stories we've been able to tell and our partners in the Regional Alliance are using made possible messaging to promote Lehigh Valley across a variety of platforms. Take Discover Lehigh Valley. Their made possible marketing resulted in more than 8 million total impressions and more than 100,000 website visits. One of our main objectives is to reach out to people who have been away from home for a while. We want them to know that there's always a place for them here, close to their family and friends. People like Jason, who grew up in the Lehigh Valley and built a successful career at some of the world's biggest technology companies while living in places like Manhattan and Silicon Valley. Jason and his family moved back to the Lehigh Valley. He's working remotely as an executive for Facebook while his young sons go to the same schools he attended. Since coming back, Jason said, my wife and I have found a whole new appreciation of the Lehigh Valley. It is a great place for remote work. Made Possible continues to grow. More partners are getting on board. A primary goal for 2021 is to expand the Alliance. We are telling the world what we've known all along. This is a great place to visit learn, live, and work, that everything they're looking for is made possible in Lehigh Valley. The Brookings Institution, in an entrepreneurship report, measured job changes at young and growing companies. Brookings ranked Lehigh Valley better than all but five of the 56 U.S. regions, with populations between half a million and a million people. That goes hand in glove with the growth of young people in the region and the output of local colleges and universities. It averages about 10,500 degrees and certificates every year. About 2,300 of those are in science, engineering, or information technology. Area high schools graduate about another 7,000 students, and each Lehigh Valley High School feeds into three regional career and technical institutes that produce more than 1,300 job-ready graduates trained in building trades, information technology, and advanced manufacturing. Another more than 1,600 adult learners complete certificates at the technical schools or the region's two large community colleges. The region's community colleges graduate about 2,300 students a year and issue another thousand or more certificates. Unlike decades ago when regional leaders talked of stemming the brain drain of a different economic time, the majority of Lehigh Valley's workforce is now under the age of 40. They're also the largest part of the Lehigh Valley's population. The population of millennials and Gen Z ages 18 to 34 have grown by 10% during the last decade. Lehigh and Northampton counties are two of only 21 of the 67 counties in Pennsylvania with population growth. As you can see, the darker blue areas show where population is growing and the darker the orange where it's in decline. The region's population growth is fueling its economic growth. Companies won't locate where there aren't enough people with the right skills to provide the talent and the muscle to meet their needs. Last year was a bit of a setback for younger workers. An unemployment rate in March of under 6% spiked to 16.5% in April. The majority of job losses struck younger and lower wage workers disproportionately as they were affected by reductions and shutdowns in the restaurant and hospitality sector. Job losses were either quickly restored or never occurred for most high wage workers. By last December, unemployment was back at 6.5%, about a percent higher than pre-pandemic levels. About three quarters of the jobs lost earlier in the year were recovered by the end of the year as total employment reached 368,000. 
The Lehigh Valley's recovery of jobs ranked in the top third of 191 metro regions tracked by Brookings. Billboards on Route 22, our major thoroughfare, advertise job openings for low-skilled, entry-level workers at a minimum of $15 per hour with benefits and signing bonuses. Those billboards competed with space from the region's two large health networks engaged in fighting the pandemic. Healthcare remains the region's largest employer by far, employing about 60,000 people. Manufacturing is second, and transportation and logistics, new retail, is third, with a combined employment of more than 67,000 workers. Traditional retail and education round out the region's top five employment sectors. Our economy's strength is its balance. The top four sectors of economic output resemble four sturdy legs of a table. There's a wonderful balance of higher skilled professional employers, advanced manufacturers in need of trained workers, healthcare providing employment from everyone from heart surgeons to janitors and every specialty in between, entrepreneurs and life science companies developing new products and diagnostics to improve quality of life, and high wage jobs for unskilled workers on the supply chain front lines delivering the food and products that keep America running. The mission of LVEDC is to work across both counties, all 62 municipalities, in conjunction with private employers, public sector leaders, and educators to ensure that all our residents, regardless of age, education, skill, race, or gender, have an opportunity to make a better life for themselves and their families. It's our coalition of the willing that helps to make that happen with its resources, its talent, and its strategic focus. We've begun work on a new three-year strategic plan for the Lehigh Valley. It will address the opportunities and challenges created by the pandemic and look again at the region's assets and its competitive advantages and put in place priorities and strategies to use them. We want to see every business return to full operation, every person have the opportunity for work, and every one of our cities and towns thrive. I'm Ed Doherty, the incoming board chair of LVEDC. It's an honor to be a part of this great organization. I'd like to start today with a thank you for our outgoing board chair, Jane Long. She has provided four years of smart strategic leadership Jane, I'll work hard to follow your great example. The coalition at LVEDC makes a tremendous difference in our uh, community. Lehigh Valley Health Network is proud of its long-standing engagement and leadership with LVEDC. An active and engaged board of directors is vital to the success of any organization. At LVEDC, we have worked hard to create a vision and a strategic plan that leads to growth throughout the community and opportunities for people of all areas. As we end this year and report out and move into the new year, we'd like to recognize two of our board members whose terms have expired. Cindy Feinberg and George Figueroa have been very important members of the LVEDC board. We also get to welcome two new board members to the LVEDC board. This year, we welcome Julian Sovaniarge President and Regional Representative Officer of Olympus Corporation of the Americas, and Steve Hoff, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of Crayola. In addition, we recognize two people whose terms have been extended, Paul Anthony and Carol Couplin. They, along with the other members of the board, bring a diverse mix of talents and experiences that will help LVEDC continue to grow and build this unique partnership and help the region grow smartly. In closing, I would like to thank our public and private partners, our investors, and all LVEDC stakeholders who make a difference in the organization and help the region grow smartly. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great afternoon.